China's financial sector seemed to be friendlier to business and stronger on IP protection after a string of reforms. I asked the head of the securities watchdog, Fang Xinghai, about how these reforms would work out in the long run. That interview right after this break. You're watching World Inside coming to you live from Beijing. Wider market access, a friendlier business environment, enhanced efforts in protecting intellectual property rights, and expansion of import trade flows. Chinese President Xi Jinping unveiled these four new major policies at the Boa Forum for Asia about China's reform and opening up. Although China has made remarkable economic and social progress, more reforms and further opening up are underway. Earlier, I had a chat with Fang Xinghai, the vice chairman of the China Securities Regulatory Commission. He shared his views about what those reforms mean for his sector. Uh, once they're implemented, uh, the Chinese financial sector will be much stronger, uh, much more vibrant, and much more international. Mm. Um, and if we continue on that direction, um, I think China's financial sector has the capability to change the landscape of the world financial market. Mm. There is the so-called increasing the equity gap and also opening of uh, more space for the international financial institutions, uh, opening up the insurance industry and many of the others. But the question is, how fast, mm. what pace, mm. What are the barometers? What is the timeline? Um, I know this is something that a lot of international uh, firms are very uh, concerned uh, with. I, uh, as the president said, uh, what we um, promised last November when uh, President Trump uh, came to Beijing would be implemented in full by the end of this year. Mm -hmm. So this is a firm timeline. Right? And uh, as far as the CSRC, which I work for, is concerned, uh, we will uh, implement what we uh, promised uh, by uh, the end of June. Now, uh, the president also said that China would uh, uh, open up uh, in insurance more and in capital markets uh, That's right. more. And uh, it just stayed he tuned. He used that the exchanges with the foreign capital market. That's right, yeah. Uh, so uh, it just stayed tuned. Um, concrete measures, mm. again, with timeline, uh, will be announced very soon. Mm. We have heard from many foreign financial institutions that they are very excited about the news. Of course, at the same time, some of them have a bit sense of cynicism mm. because they thought they have heard news about it earlier. So I guess the question is not only communication but also transparency leading up to the real eventual implementation and result. So what is likely to be the step-by-step -step transparency revealing to the outside world what we are doing and how we are doing it? You mentioned you know, some um, uh, outside uh, observers and international firms uh, uh, you know, we're kind of a little, dis little disappointed about sort of slow progress, right? Uh, now, to be fair, I think that they have a point. Um, we, uh, we did move. Uh, it's not true that we did not move at all. We did in the move. Past, you know, past few years, we did move, right? For, so for example, in my area, uh, originally uh, a foreign firm can only own 33% of a JV securities firm. Uh, a few years ago, we increased that percentage to 49 percent, right? But of course 49 is not enough because they are still not in control. Mm. And then we announced the last November that we would increase it to 51 percent. Mm. And then in three years time it will be 100 uh, percent. So, so I, you know, we are making progress but I, I agree that uh, we could have done it a little bit faster. But to the second point of your question, uh, 2018 will be an eventful year for Chinese financial sector. Mm -hmm. And the president said, you know, very perceptively, he said, history always has a way to uh, uh, concentrate a lot of events into one year, and that year would be a standout year. I think 2018 would be such a year. This year. So you're already rolling up your sleeves, huh? That's true. Work harder. And uh, 
as the president said. You know, stay tuned. There will yeah. be a lot more coming. But, you know, Mr. Fang, when we are talking about the efficiency and the speed of reform, yes. on the other hand, we should also talk about the stability and the safety of China's of uh, financial systems because you also have a goal. So how can we, on the one hand, making sure of the speed, the reform itself, on the other hand, don't forget our original goal either. So that's you're, quite you're about it. You're very right. I mean, as we uh, open up, as we innovate in the financial sector, stability is always another goal yeah. that we keep in our mind. Particularly if you do have more opening up. Uh, well, uh, it goes both ways. Sometimes yeah. when you open up, you bring in a certain uh, element of risk. On the other hand, when you open up, actually brings in stability as well mm. because uh, you know you bring more capital, for example, and that increases stability. You bring in uh, more sophisticated uh, uh, practices, and that brings in stability. Mm -hmm. But of course, you also bring in a lot of you know, speculative, perhaps activities that will increase uh, uh, the risk. So we always uh, make sure that uh, uh, the financial sector in China can progress in a stable way. Mm -hmm. And I think we are very well positioned to achieve stability in China because, uh, as you know well, you know, our, our government is uh, a quite strong government. Mm -hmm. We take uh, preventative, uh, preemptive uh, actions in a timely manner, right? And also in a way that is quite decisive. Right. So if you look, over, you look at the past 40 years, for example, China is perhaps the only developing country that has completely avoided a big financial crash. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have instabilities, yeah. we have, you know, jitteries, but we have avoided the financial uh, crash. Uh, and I think that is not a small achievement. Mm -hmm. With the institutional reform, of course, security is still on the one hand, but on the other hand, the banking and insurance yes. are being put together. Yes. So what would this mean? Particularly, for example, Mr. Fang, your relationship with your colleague from the banking and the insurance areas. Mm. I think uh, uh, the new structure of financial regulation um, is clearer than before. Uh, in you know, regulation, you regulate basically two things, financial markets and then financial institutions. Mm -hmm. And with banking and insurance putting together, the regulation of financial institutions, financial firms, a lot more integrated, so you can uh, erase you know, the financial, uh, the regulatory gap mm -hmm. between these different institutions. And the CSRC uh, has been uh, kept intact, I would say, <laughs> uh, <laughs> because our uh, original task was to regulate financial markets, mm. and that is, remains uh, our uh, task. <laughs>
eight years ago, mm -hmm. right? Now, our markets, whether it's the stock market or the commodity futures market uh, or the bond market, are already among you know, number two or number three in the world. Mm -hmm. So our size is very big and uh, it's increasing you know, every day. So we are very attractive to the rest of the world. So you know, we can use that huge size of the market to attract a lot of institutional investors right. uh, to come to China. Uh, this is something that we could not do many years ago. But China also wants to emphasize that the market will play a decisive role. Of course. On the other hand, China has a very strong government. Of course. And the government could put out measures that would be quote unquote attractive <laughs> to the uh, international investors yes. or to domestic firms yes. to be listed here in China. So how do you see that an advantage or a disadvantage? I would think uh, uh, if we can play the role of the government well, it's an, it's a, uh, an advantage, right? So you, what is quote unquote well? Um, you know, you know you, the government has to be very wise. You cannot intervene all the time, right? And you have to intervene in a wise way. Um, and when you do it in a wise way, you can, first of all, you can maintain stability, which is very important for the financial sector. And secondly, you can coordinate you know, the different forces in the society, in the system, mm -hmm to make certain big reform and opening up happen, right? In a lot of countries, for example, reforms are very difficult, very difficult. right? Because, you know, the different branches of the government, Absolutely. they are kind of interlocked uh, with each other, they cannot move, whereas not the case uh, in, in China. And, but on the other hand, you, we also want to make sure that government is like the big brother, right? It does not play, overplay its hand. And in President Xi's speech, there's one sentence which is very, very important in my view. Mm -hmm. And he said, we should not force other people to buy or force other people to, to sell. sell. And I thought that was very, very perceptive and very ne much needed Why? at this point. Because China is so big, right? You know, if we uh, always play, you know, the force that uh, plays our size, right? And, and uh, uh, force other people to buy or sell, mm -hmm. uh, they have to do it. But that's not the best that's way. That's not the best way to open up. Mm. Mm -hmm. But I wondered whether within your circle of friends and colleagues you have to debate about this all the time. I mean, it's easy if you use administrative measures. Mm. You got things done very quickly. You seem to have a great result within this small period of time. Mm. But of course, the long-term impact it is another issue. Yes. But I wondered whether people know it mm. very well. Mm particularly when they have short-term mm -hmm. interests or goals they have to achieve. So this long-term and short-term always yeah. a struggle, I would assume, Mr. Fung. That's right. I mean, there's always this trade-off between you know, long-term and short-term. Do and you have uh, your own debate? Uh, uh, well, we, uh, it's not very much manifested in internal debate. Usually, uh, people make that kind of trade-off you know, in an unspoken way, I would say. Right? That's how bureaucracy operates. Mm -hmm. But the good thing about our system is that, you know, we have one uh, ruling party, right, that is in power uh, for a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, President Xi certainly is a very long-term thinker, mm -hmm. right, and he cares about the long-term interest of the country. Right. So at that level, uh, we do have uh, a very long-term uh, goal, and that makes this, you know, short-term, long-term trade-off very much in favor of uh, the long-term outcome. Mm. Having said that though, Mr. Fang, I do have a, one question also mm. related to the latest development between China and the United States. Yes. Of course, it is a trade conflict. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily related to your field, and yet it has a connection to your field. Of we course. see the turbulence it it going on in the international market. On the other hand, if the two economies, the biggest in the world, are not necessarily seeing eye to eye to one another, there's going to be big problem mm -hmm in the financial markets. So Mr. Fang, what do you make of the latest? Uh, Did I hear you know, when, when, <laughs> when, uh, when uh, uh, some country announces certain you know, tariffs, um, you notice that, that you know, the financial markets of that country actually got hammered Absolutely. very much. So uh, I guess the lesson is clear that uh, uh, in this very interconnected the world, uh, things go both ways, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to be 
uh, very careful about the negative impact on your own economy when you try to hit another <laughs> economy. Uh, so the best way uh, to resolve these disputes is through negotiation. Mm -hmm. But there is financial risks, as we say. Well, of course, you How want to... How do you avoid, if you are thinking about thinking the long term, if the other party wants to pick up a fight? Mm. How can you avoid and think prehand mm. about preventing the risks? Um, well, you know, you make your... That's the Chinese goal, the, the, isn't it? I mean, there are always you two ways. You play the chess One, and you think yeah. about that way. Well, well I mean, there's always, you know, so two aspects you know, to, to this question. The one is that you do communicate with the other side in the advanced, uh, in the much earlier, right, in, in the in a uh, proactive way to make sure that you understand each other. But sometimes, you know, not all the communications can work out, right? So if there's a real fight, then you get really well, very well prepared. So for example, in the financial sector, you make sure your financial system is robust, right? Can withstand a certain outside shocks. Uh, if your financial sector is very much uh, fragile, uh, for example, you know, if asset prices are very high, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of bubble, then you cannot withstand that kind of shock. So make mm -hmm. sure that your system is stable. So make sure your own things... That you're very really prepared. Yeah, yeah, prepared. If uh, you have to fight, then, mm -hmm. then you have to fight. That's yeah. the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. That's an excerpt of my earlier interview with Fang Xinghai, Vice Chair of China Securities Regulatory Commission at the Boa Forum. That is all the time we have for today. If you'd like to see more, try to find us World Inside CGTN into your search engine or check out our YouTube channel. Also follow us on Twitter, Facebook and see in Weibo. From me, Tian Wei and everyone on World Inside team, thanks for watching and tune in again next time for insights across China and around the world. Good night.